This is a Pokemon game where you have to solve a murder mystery. This is Pokemon True Destiny, a game that's all about you solving the murder of your own parents. But that is not all. Interview suspects and also find a bunch of clues while also capturing yourself some regional variants. So if you are ready, let's go. So our journey starts off in True Destiny as we're welcomed into the game. We get to choose to play as a boy character and then we're told that there are regional or origin forms in this game as well as some aliens. Either way, our trip's gonna start at home where we have returned to our childhood home to see what's happened. Basically, our parents in the game have been, well, seemingly murdered by someone, which is not really, well, cool and nice and a little bit grim for a Pokemon game, but nonetheless, that's what's happening. We check the gym and that looks to be pretty busy. Our house looks normal. The clock, though, is stuck on 1 a.m., which is the time that they were apparently murdered. We leave the house and we try to figure out, okay, who broke in here around 1 a.m. and took their lives? Well, to figure that out, we're going to have to do a little bit of exploring. So one of those things we're going to do, well, we're going to head to the professor's lab because we get a call from Professor Cedar. He says that he's happy to see us here and that apparently somebody broke into his lab and stole one of his three Pokemon. And well, well, this is kind of strange, so we're going to be helping him out to solve the murder as well as the disappearance and the stealing of one of the Pokemon. He gives us one of his Pokemon, which is specifically the Abra he has, to actually use on our journey here. So, we take it, of course, I mean, what else would we do? and add it to our squad. Now that we have that, we actually have to go and explore a bit. So chapter one begins. Now, the thing is, we have to figure out actually who knows anything about this. We talk to one of the locals and he tells us that Basil, the gym leader from the local town that we're in or our hometown, he actually saw our parents last. And when we talk about the actual lab and who might have stolen it to this youngster, he tells us he saw some girl walking out of there and that also the scientists had sort of already left. So yeah, he also saw Nyx, which is Cedars or the professor brother. We go back to them and talk to them and tell them that, hey, in fact, Basil, the gym leader, was the last one to see his parents and Buckeye left way after, uh, well, Cedar did, so it's a bit sketchy because Buckeye could be the guilty party, but we do not know just yet, so we're going to have to try to figure that out. First, though, we're going to go to the next route where we run into this person. He's, well, he just tells us that things have actually changed here, that the route has been changed over the last six years, and that there are now Pokemon walking in the overworld, so... That just tells us that there's going to be stuff we can capture in the old world outside of just the regular stuff. Either way, we find a Wingle and I actually decide to capture this one. It only makes sense. We need more Pokemon. Some of the battles in this will be a little bit harder. So we're going to make sure we have some squad members in our team to make sure that the battles go our way. We also find a Ralts in the old world and I decide, okay, you know what? It's a Ralts. Let's add that to the squad as well. It will just be very powerful and strong for the team overall. Next up though, we run into a Black Belt who sends out a Makuhita. Here we don't really have the best of opportunities because, well, he is just higher hate. HP than us, you even go start a fake out. Luckily, though, we do have confusion on our Ralts, and so we end up actually taking down his Makuhita, which is pretty lucky for us, though. However, after dealing with this, we head down the route and get to, well, another patch of grass and go into a cool trainer named Andy. He has himself a Squirtle, but it's not any kind of Squirtle. It is an origin form Squirtle. Now, what's so special about this one in particular? It's the fact that this thing is an ice type, and as you guys can see, it looks different than regular Squirtle in terms of design as well. But yes, this is an origin form of Squirtle, which is specifically a ice type version. Now, after we defeat this guy and the cool trainer, we head over to S uh, Sebastian Stones' house. Now, you guys may recognize the name Sebastian Stone, but as we walk in, the guy is talking to Nyx. And now we have to figure out what's going on. We tell them our name and that we're here on the request of Professor Cedar. And apparently Nyx is here at the request of Cedar to get a keystone from Sebastian, who apparently doesn't have any more. And apparently his predecessor, who was, well... Steven Stone, if you guys know who that is, he actually knew a bit about this. So we talk to Nyx and we tell him that he's a suspect of the theft of a Pokemon as well as a murder. So we're here to interrogate him. Her question is, where was he at the, you know, from the lab after 2 a.m.? Well, he tells us he just was out getting data at the lab that he needed uh, because apparently he's doing some research that's really important. And apparently he also uses a specific Pokemon that actually is really interesting because it can go through walls and it can also control people. So after talking to him, he tells us a little bit about the roots and he also says that he's always wanted to battle a Abra. So we offered to battle him and his special Pokemon, Brutrid. So he's a suspect. So we get the suspect screen, of course, as he is one of the people that we suspect of actually being, well, the, either the killer or or specifically the thief. He's got a Butrid, as I mentioned earlier. This is one of the alien Pokemon in the game. 
You'll find a few of these as you are exploring, and uh, these are specifically based on like kind of alien forms and stuff like that. As for this one though, it's relatively easy to defeat. It does get us confused, which is a little bit more or less just annoying more than anything. We go for the water gun though, and that's enough to take Brutcher down. And we uh, he tells us that if we need anything else, we should just hit him up. We decide to go back over, and in the grass, we actually find an Origin Squirtle. Yes, it's perfect, so that means, of course, we're going to be adding this thing to our team. It only makes sense. It should be part of our squad, as I really just want to have a starter Pokemon that isn't just a regular Abra. So, after getting our hands on it and capturing it, we head back to town, and it's time to do a bit of exploring. So, we get inside, and we talk to Professor Seether. And, uh, well, uh, it doesn't really look like he knows much. Instead, we talk to Buckeye. And, well, we ask him where he was around that time. He said he was gathering information and was the third Pokemon here. He says, yep, well, yeah, I was here even when he was doing his night stuff. So we tell him that we believe him, as if we chose to not believe him, it would change the story. But I do think Buckeye is, well, innocent in this case. So after talking to him, we realize, okay, maybe there's somebody else involved here. Somebody called Daisy, a girl that also saw, uh, well, saw the parents, as well as was close to the lab. We go to the gym, though, and ask the reporters to move and get inside and talk to Basil. Basil is here, thinking we're with the reporters, but we're not. We're here to interrogate him, as he was the last person on the last night with our parents in the game. And apparently, he didn't know he was a suspect, and what questions do we have? We ask him what time he met up with the parents. He says night at 9 p.m., and he bumped into Cedar and wished him a good night. He then went to the parents' house and ate food till uh, well, maybe like 10 p.m., and then he went his, uh, to his own home. And apparently, we ask him, was he awake around 1 a.m.? And definitely not. He was asleep at 11 p.m. So, Buckeye and Nix were still in the lab when he was asleep. Now, can Cedar back up your sleeping? Do you have any more, anyone else that can confirm this? Yes, there are security cameras that cover the whole of the town. You will see everyone who goes in and out, which, yeah, pretty true. So, we now need to actually go and check out those cameras. Uh, and we also ask him, who is Daisy? Apparently, she was here and she actually challenged the gym, which uh, was a rookie mistake. And then she lives in the city past Route 1, over the bridge where Sebastian's house is, which you guys saw earlier. So, we're gonna have to go back there and figure that out. We're gonna have to talk to her, figure out what she's up to, and all that kind of stuff. Either way, though, first of all, Basil wants to have a battle, so let's take on him. He's also a suspect, of course, so that screen will show up right there. First of all, he's got a Mangosa Flower. As you may notice, he is a grass type gym leader. His Gossip Flower goes down to a singular wing attack, but he also has a Fomantis. And same thing here wing attack, 1 KO, and we got ourselves actually a free badge, which is pretty cool because uh, we're not really a gym leader. We're, we're investigating, like, you know, a crime here. So, Either way, after talking to him and getting that sorted out, we decide, all right, man, it's about time we actually get going and get to the other city because we got to check out the security cameras in the city's city center. So first, we got to go and talk to the professor and we tell him that we have some updates. So we tell him that we have four suspects and also we figured out that Daisy, well, where she is. We know where she is. She's in the city nearby visiting a friend. And well, we need to go there and check the cameras to figure out what's happening. So that's what's going to happen. But we also have a possibility here there might be a secret entrance in the lab where somebody may have gone through to actually steal the Pokemon. Now that we know this information, we actually have to look around the lab and see if we can find anything similar to a secret entrance in the lab. So, we do look around and we find this weird sign, and we ask Cedar, has he ever seen it before? Because, well, it's got some weird text on it that's kind of a riddle. He tells us, no, the clock's the only thing that's ever been there, and it's really strange. So, he just decides to, well, check it out. What's the deal with this thing? After checking it out and figuring out what it is, it looks like something is behind this thing. It looks like some Somebody's playing a sort of game, leaving weird riddles, and there is a hole in the wall that wasn't there before. And uh, yeah, it's a bit sketchy. So this means we're going to have to go over to the other city and figure out what's on those cameras to maybe figure out what's been going on here. Who actually made this hole in the wall in the lab and what's the deal behind it? Like what actually happened? So. We head down the routes and head into Route 1. For the most part here is just a few battles. We run into a, I think, a Cas uh, Silcoon, actually. And uh, for the most part here is just a wing attack. It is, of course, going to be weak to us. However, it is not a one-hit KO, which is unfortunate. But we try to take it down. So go for a second wing attack, and that's enough to defeat that thing. However, there's still going to be a few more battles, so we should always make sure we have some extra levels. We make it over the bridge now, which is no longer blocked by that kid with a bunch of zigzagoons or something, and make our way down to the next town, which is Dropford City. So Dropford City city is a relatively large place. There's a lot of people around here. If we want to go to Route 2, we really can't. It's actually blocked off at the moment. But uh, we found a Dusk Stone uh, that's being held by our Wingle. And as we enter the Pokemon Center, we also meet up with a guy who, uh, well, it's actually silver. It looks like silver from, well, Pokemon 
gold, silver, crystal, heart gold, soul silver. So yeah, we run into this guy who's talking to, it looks like a Celebi, and apparently, well, this guy looks a bit similar to somebody else we met before. And as we're talking to him, we notice that Celebi, well, it's seemingly wanting to join us. It seems like it wants to be part of our team, and it is a Pokemon for the past or the future, like it can travel between both. So we ask it if it wants to join our party, and it actually does. So yes, we, f we just get ourselves a free Celebi that joins our team. So we have a bit of a side quest now. We gotta go find that guy that was with Celebi because he looks a little bit dangerous. So let's make sure we get our hands on him. As we look around though, we run into Daisy and some sketchy guy who freaks out and runs away. So that was a bit odd. But yeah, we're asking her, okay, hello there. Uh, sorry for interrupting. But uh, what's happening with that guy? You were just friends? Yeah. Well, you're not in a relationship. Just because a guy and a girl are out doesn't mean they're in a relationship. Well, fair enough. Listen, the reason why I'm here is recently my parents were murdered and you were missing. Uh, well, turns out that she just says she's been in the city to do some stuff like the battle. And then we can check the security man cameras to prove that she was never actually in that town, which is well, actually a bit weird because we were told by Basil that she was there to do the gym challenge. She's only really been in this city, according to her. So after doing this investigation questioning, we, well, we ask her what she said, what she thinks, and uh, well, we don't really think she's a suspect yet. So we decide to just leave after she gets angry at us. But nonetheless, that's just Daisy being Daisy. We're not going to deal with her for now. For now, though, we got to go over and deal with some other things. First, First of all, this person just doesn't like cameras, which is a bit sketchy. And then over here, we found Basil's house. We decided to go down here. We found a random baby just left on the street. And then as we enter this building, we see that guy from earlier who's battling with Orcot as well as Nyx. And apparently they can't beat him. So we're going to have to do the job instead. His name is Maxi. And you guys know who Maxi is. It's the leader of Team Magma. And somehow he's been transported seemingly into the future or to a different realm or something like that. And now he wants to battle us because he wants to get his hands on Groudon. He seems to have just kind of got this weird thing going on. He's got himself a camera up. Of course, we've got ourselves Abra out first. We decide to go for the Psybeam, which I think does a decent amount of damage, just not enough to do, well, you know, to take it out in a single hit. Abra gets destroyed by the magnitude though, so we go over into uh, Celebi, of course, go for the confusion, but we get hit with a flame burst, and that just takes us down way, way, way too low. So we go for another confusion, just hoping to do a little bit of damage before it actually takes us down. So Celebi dies, but don't worry, we still have one more Pokemon left in here. It's going to be Wingle with Water, ta water Gun, which takes down the camera up. So now that that's happened, we figured out what's going on. Maxi actually realizes that he's not strong enough to defeat us. And uh, yeah, he just feels kind of annoyed that he's been defeated by another kid, which is kind of funny. But nonetheless, though, we defeated him, which means we stopped him in his tracks. And we've also completed one of the quests. So now that we completed one of the quests and how he actually got here, we, uh, well, pretty much just talked to him. And he says uh, that his plans just won't work in the future, apparently. So yeah, he's going to try to get back in some way or shape. But again, not really our problem now, is it? We just had to stop him from doing bad stuff and stop him from like causing havoc in our city or in this city rather. So we just kind of let him do his thing and complete the quest. Either way though, we leave Dropford and then we go back inside the building again. And once we enter it, we hear Nyx and Orca talking about if they can trust us and you know, what they are up to, which is something sketchy. They're both doing some weird stuff, which makes me a little bit suspicious that they might be involved in some of the stuff that's been going down. So either way, they tell us that, okay, you can go and check out the, uh, you know, computer footage and hopefully that we don't see something, some files about something called the Crimson Project, which is a bit sketchy. So we take a look at it. So Cedar left uh, around 9 p.m. at night. Well, it's time to head home. Hey, Basil. And he sees Basil along the way. Then he kind of just goes home from there. And uh, Professor Cedar just goes home as well. But Basil heads over to, well, our parents in the game. He just heads over towards them, which is fair enough. But that's not all. There's still a few other cameras and locations we need to check out before we know exactly what's going on. So we check the other location, which is 10 p.m. And well, it's getting late and we see and fast forward to Buckeye leaving the lab as well. And Buckeye here, well, he does leave as well as, well, Basil leaving the house earlier. So yeah, it looks like everything is fine. But at 12 a.m., something weird happens. Basil is here near the house around 1. And as we fast forward, he leaves at 1 a.m. I got you, Basil. And he checks his house to be sure. So we know that Basil was at the house. The gym leader Basil was at the house at that time, which is very important because that would put him at the scene of the crime around the exact time that it happened. We talk to the others and they just tell us to go ahead and they won't stop us, which is fine. We go over to Basil's house, though, in the city and we look in his fridge and, well, we find something interesting. We find two missing bullets in a gun and uh, it's full minus the two bullets. Again, it was in the fridge, 
and it could be for self-defense, but yeah, it is a bit sketchy. So we're going to give it to Buckeye to do a DNA test. And as we do that, though, we first go over to Daisy's house and just see what she's up to. So go ahead, search my house. It's not like it will ruin anything. So we look around and on the computer, we find a series of files and apparently something called the Crimson Logan Trio, something along those lines and bookcases filled with like the TCP, which sounds the Pokemon company and a bunch of other stuff. As we're looking around, we decide, OK, let's talk to Daisy again. Yeah. What do you want? Well, what's up with all the files in your computer and the books on your shelf? I like reading a variety of books and the computer was passed down to me. Well, you were the previous owner. Apparently, the previous owner was actually Giovanni, and this house is really weird because the house looks like it's supposed to belong in the Kanto region and not here in Dropford City, which is strange. We head over to Sebastian's house real quick just to check up on him. As we talk to him, though, we get to learn that, well, He's not much of a special guy, and he personally thinks that the best person ever from his family tree was Steven Stone, the champion of the Hoenn region. His part of Pokemon was Metagross, and he was a collector of different stones. However, he was never that well known, which is why our character in the game doesn't really know much about him, as he was sort of forgotten to time. However, as we're talking to him, he tells us that, hey, not everybody gets into the history books. It's a shame, because it prioritizes some names and not others, which is kind of sad. But he never cared about that, and he didn't really want his name in the lights, and well, he was a still alive when the meteor crash happened and that was around the same time where he actually quit being the champion and apparently that's how the plot works in this game but nonetheless though we head back to the professor's lab now that we have a bunch of information we talk and apparently the fingerprints on the gun do belong to Basil. so now that we know that we call everybody over to discuss all of this and get to the bottom of it all right raffled how do you want this to start well let's start with all the facts that we know for certain my parents were murdered at 1 a.m yesterday and well, the Pokemon was stolen sometime when Buckeye left at 12 a.m. Nyx stayed an extra two hours after Buckeye left, but did not, I think I'm pretty sure did not, actually see if Buckeye stolen. Daisy was gone all yesterday, but was seen earlier at this day, or rather this morning, actually battling with Basil. But she said she actually didn't. And well, he said he went to the, the I guess, the house of our parents around 10 p.m. and then went to sleep around 11 p.m. But when we look at the actual, well, cameras, that wasn't true. And he says, there's no reason for me. And the security footage showed you entering my parents' house right after 1 a.m. and then leaving shortly after 1 a.m. You're lying. Why would I even want to kill them? I'm a gym leader. So he gets angry and he sends us into a battle. Of course, he is one of the suspects, so we're going to have to battle him no matter what, which is a little bit annoying. He's got himself two Pokemon again. It's going to be Gossy Flower again. So we're going to kick off, of course, with Abra. We go for the Psy Beam, which should do a decent amount of damage. Maybe not to one hit KO it or anything like that, but just enough to take it down relatively well. He, of course, lowers our evasiveness here, but doesn't matter. A second Psy Beam is enough to destroy the Gossy Flower. So he only has one more Pokemon left. And if you remember from earlier, guys, you will know that that it was most likely for Mantis. So now that we know it's for Mantis, we switch over into Wingle, just knowing we'll get that one hit KO most likely relatively easily because we do have Wing Attack on the Wingle. So when the Phantom Mantis comes out, we decide, okay, Wing Attack is all that's necessary. It's going to be a one hit KO. Now that we defeated Basil though, well, he's just going to have to accept that he is guilty. And he tells us that he lost again. But then we ask him, all right then, tell me Ruffle, how did I kill your parents? With the gun I found in your fridge. Ah, so you found that. I just have that for self-defense. I've never actually used that in my whole life. Except that it's missing two bullets, which makes it seem that it was used to kill my parents. Well, someone said it there. They set me up. That must be what's happened. Right, guys? Basil, it can't be you. Uh, well, the fingerprints of the gun are Basil's. I'm being set up. All right, now let's send this guy to jail. What are we waiting for? Well, Daisy seems a little bit already anxious to go right in and say that, well, he's guilty. Well, come on. Why wouldn't he? It just makes logical sense. Well... That's what Nick says. He was obviously the one who also stole the Pokemon. Why are you so persistent about that? I just want this to be over as quickly as possible so I can get back to my work. So I can explain the reason that it's him. All right, before I decide who the culprit actually is, I need to talk to Nick in a question. Your Pokemon can possess people, and that's not all. You know, they can also possess other Pokemon. Well, when did he tell you that? Well, he actually told us that on Route 1. You guys will remember earlier in the game, he actually said that to us when we met him and we battled his Pokemon. And in Route 1, he told me otherwise. He told me that the Pokemon that he uses, the uh, Butterwise, whatever it's called, that Pokemon actually is able to control other Pokemon and also to control humans. So is it possible then that maybe he actually used that Pokemon to control Basil and send him over 
to kill the parents. So we decide to blame specifically in this case, Nyx. Nyx was the one who actually stole the Pokemon for a fact. And well, it's possible, you know, he made it to the house through that way. He actually uses partner Pokemon Brutrid, in, which is the key to the whole case. So what does that mean? It means absolutely nothing, Ruffled. Well, it could have gone through the walls, left the lab and gone over to Basil's house and possessed him during his sleep. Made him grab a gun and then go to my parents' house and, well, end them. Except I didn't have Brutrid on me. Yep, I left it at my house. Do you have any proof of this? I mean, yeah, I'll give you some proof. I didn't go Brutrid which means we have to battle once again. So yeah, this is our second suspect, Nyx. As you may notice, all the people involved here are really, really angry about being called out for anything, but they all seem suspicious and sketchy. So Forbidron is up first here. It's going to be, I guess, the evolution of Brutrid, which, uh, I mean, it looks pretty cool, but it puts us to sleep, which is a little bit annoying. It goes for Mean Look, which means we can no longer escape, but we wake up relatively fast, and then we just spam our little side beams, hoping to take it down. It goes for Payback, which does take us out, but fear not, we do have a relatively large team of Pokemon, so we go into Wingle. And here, all we really need is to just wing attack this thing, I think, once, and that should maybe be enough, which, no, it isn't. Apparently, we need one more hit, but we do get confused along the way, and unfortunately, I think our luck is pretty off here, so we do get hit by the confusion, but fear not, we should maybe, hopefully, be able to finish it off now. However, the confusion gets hit again, and here we get another payback. So, Wingle dies, which is, oh, a bit problematic, but it's fine. We still have Ralt, Celebi, and a few other Pokemon as well. So, we're going to Celebi instead. Here, we decide to go for the Magical Leaf, which is sick animation, by the way, but it's enough to take Forbidron down, which means it's been sorted as well. Now, however, this guy, well, he's the guilty one. At least that's what we think as of right now. We decide to not get the move teleported and just give up on it uh, because honestly, I don't really see the point of getting teleported at this point. Just don't really need it. We don't really need it in the same way that we might need an escape rope at the moment, which we don't need either. Nonetheless, though, we give Ice Shard to one of our Pokemon and he also has himself a Kankwort, which is uh, this weird abomination. But we go for the Magical Leaf, which does a ridiculous amount of damage. I'm assuming this thing is probably like a rock ground something type, something like that. So uh, yeah, Magical Leaf twice is enough to take it down. Kankwort is gone now, but we still have to figure out what What's going on? He says he's not the culprit, and it's kind of hard to believe him. He says, either we're brothers, you have to trust me. Well, the professor, it's up to him now. We need to know if he actually believes him. Ruffled, stop. Hmm, well, let him speak. Isn't obvious you're overwhelming him. I'm trying to get him to confess. Don't call me Cedar, call me Professor. Now, what if he has nothing to confess? Seems like the Professor actually seems pretty angry that we're calling out his brother. Uh, he says, Ruffled, I admit it, uh, I did steal a Pokemon, but I didn't possess the, the thingy that killed your parents. Is it even stealing if it's my brother's lab and the Pokemon here belong to him? Well, I thought you were only looking into murder, so I didn't say anything. But yeah, apparently he did steal the Pokemon. He needed it for the research on some sort of project he has. But uh, he does say, though, you did possess Basil. And what's your proof, Ruffled? Didn't we battle yesterday when you left the lab? Well, huh, we didn't. Yeah, I was heading over to Ruffled's parents' house at 2 a.m. and I ran into you. We had a battle for old time's sake and you had your Brutrid on you. Uh, well, Nyx doesn't remember that, and then I went into the house and found them dead, and called the cops, which is a bit weird. Checkmate, Nyx. Well, I possessed Basil and made him kill your parents. What, but why? They were going to shut down our lab because of our connections with the Crimson Project. Because of some of the experimentation we're doing, I couldn't let that happen. So you resorted to killing. Everything was going according to plan until you recruited Ruffled to look into this. Nix, what experiments were you doing here? I wish I could tell you, Ruffled. I wish I could. Uh, or but basically, Orcot has told him not to. The guy from uh, Dropford City. Well, don't tell me I didn't warn you. Don't mess with Orcot. Which, uh, yeah, it's a bit weird. But it doesn't matter what Nix has done. It doesn't matter. And you'll know why when we solve this. What what else could possibly be talking about? Daisy, yeah, what about me? What happened at your house? When you force kicked me out, it was like I teleported. No, you didn't. I didn't know what you were talking about. Well, why is there a house from Kanto all the way here in Asmos? That's the mystery we need to answer. Ruffle, what are you going on about? Daisy's house used to belong to Giovanni. The files on it talk about Crimson, which I now know, th uh, now think talks about the Crimson Project. What would ever give you that ID? What is it, Crimson? Oh, stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. D oh, well, looks like something's happening. Daisy is clearly trying to stop us from actually saying anything, and it's even muffling our voice. Nobody can understand us, so everything we say doesn't make any sense. She keeps saying stop talking and honestly this part of the game gets a little bit creepy man uh it's just i don't really know what's going on the person is just controlling us and every time we try to figure anything out uh our voices just get muffled if we say anything we get pretty much destroyed are you scared yet ruffled and well we're trying to figure out yes i'm talking to you well 
Good, now you may talk. What did you do to me? Well, I made it so no one could understand what you were saying by scrambling your words. Well, where are we? Well, there's a few options. A killing game. We're in a killing game. Daisy has been the mastermind behind this whole killing game we've been in. She forced Nyx to kill my parents to play along in this killing game of despair. I didn't force anyone to kill anyone. What would bring? Uh, I wouldn't bring that much despair. I don't care about despair. Well, what other options is it? A simulation. We're in a simulation. Who cares that, uh, wait, that possessed Basil because you didn't, because you're not real. And none of this is real. Then maybe there's a glitch. Well, it looks like everybody's kind of trying to figure that out. And ding, ding, ding. Only took you one try. Well, which... It's really weird, man, but we're not in a simulation. I chose to kill Ruffold's parents. That's what Nick says. No, that was all a choice by me. Apparently, Daisy is the one controlling everything. One last question for you, Daisy. Well, are we part of the Crimson Project or caught Giovanni or the player? What is this all? You're Giovanni, the ex-leader? Nope, not that silly old man. Well, what could it be then? Are you the player? You're the player being controlled by the same person controlling me? No, I think you would know if I was also the player. You're the one who, at the end of the day, is, you know, doing all this. Well... Part of the Crimson Project. Your house was just a recreation of Giovanni's cells. Get your PC link up to the files of your computer so you can access them in the simulation. All right. You're smart, almost too smart. So I guess I have to, well, uh, battle you, which is exactly what happens. The fate of your memories, I can do that. So yes, it looks like we have been in a literal simulation this whole time, which is honestly pretty crazy, man. So this murder mystery was all a simulation and our parents didn't even exist in the game. Arceus is the Pokemon she uses, of course, because, well, what else would she use? I mean, she's literally the god of this in-game world. So we battle her. Her actual Arceus is going to be relatively hard to defeat. It goes for punishment, which does, uh, well, a lot of damage against us. Ralts falls, and we don't really have a lot of Pokemon left ever since the other ones kind of fell early on in the previous battles. So we send up Celebi, and we go for the Confusion. Hits us with punishment again, which does so much damage, but luckily Confusion is able to do a little bit. So here we hope to hit at least a second one. Punishment comes in again and destroys Celebi, leaving us with only really one Pokemon, which is going to be Squirtle. We do send the Squirtle out, though, and fear not, we have a chance of actually still doing this. So we go for the Ice Shard, I think, or the Powdered Snow. It really doesn't matter which one we go for at this point. We get hit by the actual uh, Punishment again, and we get the Freeze Hacks onto the Arceus. And then we go for the Ice Shard, because why not? However, the Freeze goes and disappears, but every time the actual, I guess... RC is trying to use one of its moves. It ends up non-stop failing. So it goes for the gravity instead. And here we keep going for ice shards. And they're doing a lot of damage, man. So when it goes for cosmic power, we should be able to still outspeed, I think, and take it down with like two more hits. So we go for another ice shard. And there it is. We actually defeated Arceus, the god of Pokemon, with a Squirtle, which is a little ridiculous. I'm not even gonna lie. However, though, that's that. The battle has been defeated. She is a little bit annoyed at that. But nonetheless, though, our Squirtle also evolves and we get ourselves a War Turtle, of course. So after that, she tells us, well, honestly, if you thought that she was going to keep her words, we're idiots. And we ask, but why? Or Cedar ask why? We're going to shut down our lab because of our connections with Giovanni. We had to do what we had to do to survive. Yes, but you should never resort to killing Nyx. And well, it was all going well until Cedar recruited you, Ruffle. So yeah, what happened just now was time was sent back. We were basically reset set the memories of what we knew about daisy were all reset and basically we have to give nix the the actual i don't know uh, the, the punishment he's the one who's guilty and uh, he tells us to good luck with our work our next job or whatever and yeah nix is going to be the guilty one the true destiny uh has now you know been completed the, the chapter one is completed so yeah that's pretty much it for the game guys that's it for the first chapter i would highly recommend check out the game yourself it's relatively short but yeah definitely check it out too and hopefully we'll see a chapter two introduced in the future. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.